Good afternoon and happy Wednesday. I hope you have had a wonderful week. I hope you and your family are well. Pastor Stecker here with Grace Lutheran Church in Nashua, New Hampshire, and we're continuing our Bible study on the Psalms, prayers for the journey of life. And um, today we're finishing our three-part series here on Psalm 22, uh, because we're here in Holy Week, and uh, tomorrow we're approaching, uh, tomorrow will be Monday, Thursday, and then we're gonna have Good Friday on Friday, and uh, Easter, of course, is coming up on Sunday. So Psalm 22 is probably the central psalm for Holy Week. It's certainly the central psalm that gives us a window into what Jesus goes through on the cross. And these last two days, what we've done is uh, really dive down, you could say, into the muck and mire. Dive down and try to understand and contemplate what it is that Jesus goes through on the cross. And in the first, uh, the first 21 verses of Psalm 22, have powerful imagery and uh, really give us a powerful message of what Jesus, the Son of God, the Christ, the Anointed One, uh, the Suffering Servant, what he goes through on the cross in order to purchase us, in order to win us over, in order to redeem us from our sins. And uh, we'll continue to contemplate that and meditate on that, especially in our services on Thursday and Friday. Uh, which both will be at 7 o'clock. Uh, they'll be premiered. We can watch it together like we do our normal Sunday services. Um, both services will be slightly different um, because we're really going to focus on, uh, on Thursday. Monday, Thursday, we're really going to focus on uh, the scripture verses. And uh, we're really going to highlight that with a dramatic reading in order to showcase um, the promise that God makes with us, that we will be his people and he will be our God and how he makes that promise um, in a very special way on the night before he's betrayed. And then on Friday, we're really gonna highlight and um, have another dramatic reading for the words that Jesus says from the cross. So I invite you to, as we go through those two days, continue to look at and think on Psalm 22 because it shows us and gives us a great window into what Jesus goes through throughout this process. Uh, but today, as we finish off Psalm 22, we are going to get a little bit of a sneak peek into what's coming on Sunday, what comes on Easter, because Psalm 22, as, uh, as brutally honest as it gets to what Jesus goes through, the second half shines light on everything that's going on, shines light into the darkness. And really what we get to see here in the second half, uh, or the third half, uh, verses 21 through 31, is we get to see the why. Early on in the first half, we saw the what. We saw what Jesus went through. Um, but in the second half, we understand why. We understand the pain, um, the affliction, the misery that Jesus went through on the cross in order to save us, and therein we see his love. But ultimately, here we see that the death that Jesus dies is a victorious death. And he overcomes the bulls of Bashan, he overcomes the roaring lions that, that, uh, that uh, growl at, at him. He overcomes sin, death, and the devil, and all evil. Uh, this is a victorious death that he goes through, and he does it in order to win us. And as we look at this uh, second half here, verses 22 through 31, um, we really get a picture of that. And the four parts we're going to look at here, uh, here in Psalm 22, is the reward, the redemption, the comfort, and ultimately the message and where it goes. Uh, but to set the stage for these, if you look at verse 22, uh, 22 is an interesting verse sets the stage for us. Uh, 22 reads, I will tell of your name to my brothers in the midst of the congregation. I will praise you. Now, the reason this is an interesting verse is because in Hebrews uh, chapter 2, verse 12, the author of Hebrews ties this verse in to Jesus' own words, which makes sense if Jesus prays this from the cross. But the author of Hebrews says that Jesus was not ashamed to call us brothers. And that he does call us brothers now. Um, and the reason he does that is because he died, redeemed us, covered us with his righteous robes. And in doing so, we are now called brothers of Christ. Now, isn't that just an amazing way to set this off? Why did Jesus go to the cross? So that we can be called his brothers and sisters in Christ. So that we can be children of God. So that we can receive in our baptism the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and be called a Christian, a child of God, a brother of Christ because of him purchasing us through what he goes through on the cross. And this sets the stage. 
What does what being a brother of Christ look like? Uh, it looks like the way that Psalm 22 plays out rest of the way. And let's jump now to the reward. Uh, verse 23. Uh, continuing on, I'll read 22 again. I will tell of your name to my brothers in the midst of the congregation. I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. And stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. Ah, what's going on here? Why are we called the offspring of Israel? Ah, this verse is about the reality that what Jesus accomplishes is the beginning of his church. The church has always been where those who are the brothers of Christ come and gather. Those who are in his name do what verse 23 says. They, uh, they praise him. They glorify him. They stand in awe of him. And they are the offspring of Israel. In other words, they are the ones who are in that covenant and that, that, that uh, binding promise relationship with God. That is who we are. And that's why we get baptized into the church. When we receive the name of Christ, we are now part of his team. We are now his brothers. And we stand in awe of him. We praise him. Um, Galatians 3.14 says, So that in Christ Jesus, the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles, so that we might receive the promised spirit through faith. See, we are now brought into Israel. We who uh, probably aren't, I'm not, I wasn't, born uh, Hebrew, I wasn't born Jewish, um, but we are brought in through the spirit that's given to us in our baptism, and now we are offspring of Abraham. We receive the same blessing of Abraham is what Galatians tells us. It's what Psalm 22 tells us. It tells us that uh, even a thousand years before Jesus, that someone will come and the reward will be that the good news, the gospel, the saving grace, the Holy Spirit will now go out to the world and bring people into the church. Um, that is what the church is. Both the individual churches, Grace Lutheran Church, and the church throughout the world is the gathering of Christ's brothers and his brethren. Now, yesterday we took a look at a psalm, I'm sorry, at uh, the hymn, Stricken, Smitten, and Afflicted. And we looked at verses 1 and 3. And I want to put before you now verse 4, because we're going to sing this tomorrow. And... Uh, Listen here to verse 4. This is the final verse in the hymn. It says, Here we have a firm foundation, here the refuge of the lost. Christ, the rock of our salvation, is the name of which we boast. Lamb of God for sinners wounded, sacrificed to cancel guilt. None shall ever be confounded who on him their hope have built. Uh, Christ, who has redeemed us, who has canceled out our guilt, um, who makes the promise that we will never be confounded. Why? Because we are his brothers and we are children of God. Uh, this is the reward. This is why he goes through everything on the cross. This is why he comes to earth to purchase you so that you can be his brother and sister in Christ. Uh, this is something to rejoice for. This is why we rejoice in Easter because he rises from the dead and through his death and resurrection, he accomplishes all for us. Um, so, here on Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, we remember the pain and misery that he goes to, but always remember that he's doing this for a reward. He's doing this as a victorious death over sin, death, and the devil. Uh, now, second, moving on, um, for redemption. And we, get the, we know the term redemption, but in verse 24 and 25, it speaks very strongly of the redemption that Christ accomplishes. Uh, it reads, for he has not despised or abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, and he has not hidden his face from him, but has heard when he cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation, my vows I will perform before those who fear him. Um, here quickly, we just see that Jesus did not shy away from the affliction of the afflicted. Um, he did not shy away. Um, why is this? The reason is, in order to purchase us, in order to bring us redemption. He saw that the cross was worth it in order for you. And your takeaway here, as you pray this and as you reflect on this, is if you were the only person who ever existed, even if you were the only person that he had to save, he would have gone through all of that to purchase you, to redeem you, so that you could be called his brother and sister and live for eternity with him in heaven, uh, to have that redeemed and restored relationship. 
And this should show you that you have infinite value in God's eyes. Infinite value. He knit you in his mother's womb. He went to the cross in order to purchase you. Uh, you are his reward. And that is redemption, and it's beautiful. Uh, moving right along, three, we get to see the comfort. And the comfort here in verse 26 is, uh, is strong. Verse 26 reads, The afflicted shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. I love this one because um, here in verse 26, we know that Christ was raised from the dead. Um, he lives uh, with the Father in heaven. Right? Death did not win. Death did not have dominion over Christ. Um, he did die, but he was risen from the dead. Um, and what we are told is that we will also die, but ultimately we will be risen just like Christ. He was like a pioneer. He was the first one that entered into heaven, uh, bringing humanity with him. And he brings us with him. And look at the way it ends. May your hearts live forever. Isn't that beautiful? Your heart will live forever ever if you are in Christ. And uh, that's Jesus right there from the cross in Psalm 22. And uh, it makes me think of John 14, verse 19, right before he goes to the cross. This is what Jesus says to his disciples and says to us. He says, yet a little while and the world will see me no more. But you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. And that's what Jesus says to us, and that brings us absolute comfort. Even in the face of death, even in the face of a death one, uh, of a death of a loved one, Jesus says to us, um, just as I died and now live, uh, you, your loved one, even though they may die, they shall live. Why? Because they're in me. And fourth, and finally, we move to um, the message. It's verses 27 to 31 and how this finishes and carries out, uh, which really should work as an inspiration for us. What did Jesus go through on the cross? Uh, why did he do it? In order to redeem us. Um, that was his reward. But his message actually goes out to all the world, and that's what verses 27 to 31 talks about. That, that, uh, that great accomplishment, that great victory, um, it doesn't stay bottled up, it now spreads through the world. And uh, let's go ahead and read verses 27 to 31. Uh, reads, all the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nation shall worship before you. For kingship belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. All the prosperous of the earth eat and worship. Before him shall bow down all who go down to the dust, even the one who could not keep himself alive. Posterity shall serve him. It shall be told of the Lord to the coming generation. They shall come and proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn, that he has done it. In other words, that it has been accomplished, that it is finished. Um, and I love this. It, it tells us, as it does elsewhere in the Bible, that this message, this gospel message, that Christ has conquered sin, death, and the devil, um, that there's a new way to a life of living in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, which is granted to us in our baptism, and living as a Christian community, um, receiving redemption from Christ. Um, we are his reward, but also now receiving his guidance as we go out and help spread that message to so many people who need it. And it's been just amazing, even in the past 50 years, how this has spread. Uh, places like South Korea had almost no Christians 50, 60 years ago, and now almost half their nation is. Um, there's no question right now there are more Christians and the church is spreading as fast as ever throughout the world um, and this is just a beautiful thing. It's what Psalm 22 talks about. Uh, it's this great message of reward, of redemption, of comfort that goes out. Um, and we are called Christ's brothers, so we're allowed and invited to go share that with others. And what a wonderful gift, especially in a time like this, when so many people are looking for a message of hope, uh, looking for a message that even if a disease comes and brings death, death does not have the final say. Death does not have the victory. Death, where is thy sting? Christ has uh, conquered death. He has won us. And therefore, we don't even really need to fear death. We will mourn death, and we absolutely will, but we don't have to fear it because it does not have the final say. Um, one of my favorite examples of this is, uh, well, it's, it's outlined here in verse 31 where it says that this message will go out still to a people yet unborn. 
And in John chapter 17, which is uh, right before he goes to the cross, it's when he's in the upper room. Um, it's Wednesday nights right now, or it's Wednesday afternoon. So this would be tomorrow evening um, when Jesus is with his disciples. They're eating the Last Supper. And um, in John, uh, there's a couple chapters there. I think it's like 14 through 17 where he is talking with his disciples. And you get to see um, a little bit longer of a conversation compared to the other Gospels. We get a, a little vision of what Jesus is talking about with his disciples right before he goes to the cross. And in John chapter 17, it's often called the high priestly prayer. Um, he prays to the Father, and then he prays, um, he prays for those disciples that are sitting there with him. So he's there praying for them. And then um, right towards the end of this, uh, he turns and he says, now I want to pray for all of those who believe in me through your word. In other words, the message now that those disciples spread, the good news of uh, so many more people who saw the risen Christ and said, Jesus is Christ, he has conquered death, and that message spreads. Uh, Jesus, when he's in the upper room, and when he's on the cross, because he prays Psalm 22, when he's on the cross, when he's in the upper room, he's even praying for those who will believe in him and aren't yet born. In other words, on the cross, in the upper room, Jesus was praying for you and he was praying for me. Now, isn't that absolutely beautiful? Jesus is in charge. He is king. He has conquered sin, death, and the devil. And that message will go out to the world and it is going out to the world through God's guidance, um, through the Holy Spirit, and through us who are his brothers in Christ. This is why Jesus went to the cross. Uh, Psalm 22 shows us what Christ went through but ultimately shows us why he went through it. Um, so let's finish. Let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and read tonight in Compline. We're going to read the entire psalm. Uh, so I won't do that. But let's go ahead and just read the verses we just went over. We'll read verses 22 through 31, and then um, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow in our Monday Thursday service, which is at 7 p.m. And on uh, Friday, our Good Friday service will be at 7 p.m. And then on Easter, as we get to celebrate together, uh, let us read. I will tell of your name to my brothers in the midst of the congregation. I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. And stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he has not despised or abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, and he has not hidden his face from him but as heard when he cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will perform before those who fear him. The afflicted shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nation shall worship before you. For kingship belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. All the prosperous of the earth eat and worship, before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, even the one who could not keep himself alive. Posterity shall serve him. It shall be told of the Lord to the coming generation. They shall come and proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn, that he has done it, that it is finished. Thank you for joining us for the study of the Psalms. I hope your holy week is going great. Uh, God bless you. God be with you. Take care.